Hello and welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll take a look at the new takeoff system in Price a Job. Construction takeoffs, material takeoffs, or quantity takeoffs. No matter how you call it, a takeoff is a breakdown of all materials and quantities required to complete a construction project. Traditionally, this data is taken off of the floor plan or blueprint as specified by the architect, engineer, or draftsperson. Creating an accurate takeoff is an important step in estimating a construction project and we're happy to announce the highly anticipated release of the new takeoff tool in Price a Job, specifically designed to make job estimating faster, easier, more professional, and profitable. There are two methods for accessing the takeoff module, either here in the module toolbar by selecting the takeoff system and either creating a new takeoff or selecting an existing takeoff, or here in the navigation panel, we can select rooms, drawings, and either create a new takeoff drawing or select an existing one. In this case, we'll select the takeoff module here in the toolbar and add a new takeoff. This creates a new takeoff in a new window. And this is done intentionally so that if we're working with two separate monitors, we can move our takeoff to our second screen and still be able to work on our estimate on one screen and our takeoff on the other. Alternately, if we're working on a single screen, we can resize our windows so that they're cascaded or tiled, and this way we can work back and forth on our estimate and our takeoff at the same time. For this tutorial, we'll just work with the takeoff on full screen on our primary monitor. So the first thing we'll want to do is give our takeoff a new name. So in this case, we'll call it Takeoff Tutorial. Next, we'll want to add some drawings to our takeoff. So to do that, we'll click on the Add Drawing button and click on our workspace to place the image. With our mouse, we can click on the image to drag it around. We can also use the scroll wheel on our mouse to zoom in on the image, or click on the middle mouse wheel to pan the workspace around to see our various images. So for example, let's add another drawing and place that beside the first. Now we can click on either one to move each image individually, or we can click on the middle mouse wheel to pan the entire workspace about. If we require multiple drawings, we can zoom out a little, pan up, and add a few more drawings. So we'll add one here, and add one more here. If we add too many drawings and we need to remove one, we can simply click on that and press delete. And that will remove this drawing from our workspace. And we needn't be too fussy about the placement of these images just yet, because the scale has not been set. So once we set the scales, we'll reposition them as necessary. But for a rough placement, this will do for now. Now you'll notice that each of our drawings is outlined in a green border. And that's an indication that each of these images is unlocked. That means that we can click on this image to move it about the workspace and make other adjustments to the drawing. The first adjustment that we're focused on is setting the scale. By clicking on an image, we also open the image toolbar here at the top. If I click off the image, the toolbar disappears. Click on the image and here's the image toolbar. Here we have options to upload a drawing in the place of our placeholder image, or we can set the opacity for each of these images, or we can lock the image to prevent any other further changes. And you'll notice that that removes the green border. But because we have several adjustments to make first, we'll make sure that this image remains unlocked. And we'll start by uploading an image. Images can be uploaded from our system, and the accepted file formats include PINGs or PNG, JPEGs or JPG, or PDF documents. Let's start by uploading a PNG. And this replaces our placeholder with an actual drawing. Let's move on to our next image and upload another. So here we'll upload this time a JPEG. And for this one, we'll upload a PDF. And note that this PDF is a larger file, so it may take a moment to upload. Now we have a variety of drawings added to our workspace, but each of these drawings is a separate scale. So the next thing we'll have to do is inform Price a Job of the scale of each of these images. To do that, we'll zoom in on the image, and we'll note that several of these have a dimension label marked on them. So for this, what we can do is we'll align this blue Price a Job dimension marker with the dimensions labeled on our drawing. So to do that, we'll grab the small pink dot, which is the handle, 
and we'll align that approximately with the end of the dimension label. And same thing with the other end of our price of job dimension marker. And this only has to be approximate right now. And then we can update the measure to match the drawing, in this case 14,452. Now if we zoom out, we can see that the scale of this image has been greatly increased. So we can just reposition this roughly and zoom back in to see that now that we have more pixels to work with, that our price of job marker is slightly off the dimension label on the image. So let's adjust that to be more precise. And we'll do the same on the other end. Grab the handle and align that with the end of the dimension label. We'll try to be as precise as possible. And we can see that in fact our rough scale was off by a little bit. So we'll just simply update this to 14,452 and that should fine tune our measure to be exactly in scale with the drawing. And if we'd like to double check our scale, Price of Job also has a dimension tool right here in the tool panel. So let's click on that and using our dimension tool, we will click here on the end of this label and stretch across to the other end. And we can see that without having zoomed in to make sure that my marks were exactly pixel perfect, that we are approximately correct at 14,450. And that seems quite accurate for a scale of this size. So now that we've set the scale for this image and positioned it on our workspace to a place that we're comfortable with, let's go ahead and select the image. Oh, and we still have our dimension tool activated here. So in order to exit that, we'll click the escape button. Now that we've exited our dimension tool, now we can click on the image and this opens the image toolbar. And here we can lock the image. And this prevents this image from being repositioned on the workspace and prevents us from accidentally readjusting the scale. However, we can still zoom in and out, pan around on our workspace, and as well for this image, we can adjust the opacity. Now let's move on to our next image. In this one, we'll notice if we zoom in that we have no dimension labels on this one to set our scale to. So for this, we'll just have to choose a feature in the drawing for which we have a known measure. That might be an interior wall or an exterior wall, or perhaps in this case, we'll use the double garage doors. So here we'll align the end of our scale measure to one end of the doors and the other end of our scale measure to the other. And we'll just keep this approximate. And we know that the double garage doors are 4,260 millimeters. And that rescales this image. So we can zoom out and adjust this one on our workspace. And let's zoom back in to fine tune our measure because as you can see, it was very approximately placed. So now that we have more pixels on our screen to work with, we can adjust the measure here to exactly the side of the garage doors. And here we can re-input our scale at 4260 to fine tune our scale. I can see that my arrow here is a little bit off angle, so let's just adjust that slightly and fine tune again. 4260 there and if we wish we can use our dimension tool to test this so we'll check that end click here and click at the opposite end and we can see that our dimension tool says this is approximately 4260 and again I can see that I'm not pixel perfect but this is close enough to let us know that our scale is properly set so we'll press escape to exit our dimension tool and then we can zoom out select this image adjust the opacity and go ahead and lock the image. Now we'll do our third drawing. So we'll zoom in on this one. And if we look, we can see that there are actually within this PDF that we uploaded a variety of drawings. So here we have the interior floor plan as well as the exterior elevation. And if we zoom in closely, we can see that the floor plan is set at a scale of one to 50 but the exterior elevation is set at a scale of 1 to 100. So we will not be able to set a scale for this image that satisfies both sets of images, the 1 to 50 floor plan and the 1 to 100 elevation. So to solve this dilemma, what we'll do is simply add another image and re-upload our PDF. And again, this larger file might take a moment to upload. And now we have two identical drawings, but we can set them for separate scales. 
So let's go ahead and do the floor plan first. So first we'll center on this and we'll select our image and grab the handle and we'll set this for a known measure. And there is a dimension marked here at the top. So we'll just place that approximately, center on our screen and zoom in. And we can see that this measure here is 4,400 millimeters. So we'll just adjust that to 4,400 and enter. And that greatly adjusts the scale of this drawing. So we'll go ahead and zoom out and drag this down below. And we'll just move this one to the side as well. And then we will pan to center, zoom in, and we will fine tune our dimension here. So we'll zoom in as close as possible to get this pixel perfect. And grab the handle, the pink dot, and align this end of the dimension tool to this end of the dimension label, and this end of the dimension tool to this end of the dimension label. And that looks approximately correct. So we'll go ahead and fine tune our scale to 4400 millimeters. And again, if we wish, we can use our dimension tool to mark this end of the dimension label and this end of the dimension label. And we can see that we're very close to 4400 millimeters. And we'll press escape to exit this tool. Now we'll zoom out again. And we have one more image to do here. So we'll go ahead and pan to center zoom in tight on this one and now we need to set the scale for our elevation and we can see here that we have a measure on this image for 14452 so we'll go ahead and zoom out so we can grab the handles of our scale tool and we'll set that approximately to one end and set this approximately to the other end zoom back in just get this a little bit closer perhaps and you can see that we're working on a very small image at this point. So we'll just give this an approximate label, 14452. Now we can zoom out. Reposition our elevation drawing and pan to center. And zoom in close. And this time we will fine tune our measure. Grab the handle here to put this end of the scale tool to this end of the dimension label. And same thing for the other end. Grab this end of the scale tool and align it with this end of the dimension label. That's approximately correct. So now we'll re input our measure to 14,452. And again, if we wish, we can use our dimension tool to measure our scale and we can see that we are very close to 14452 with this and press escape to exit that so now we have all of our drawings set to the proper scales so what we can do now is go ahead and lock these images and this will prevent them from being moved about out of place on our workspace and prevent us from accidentally adjusting the scale and as you can see it's a rather simple process but a very important one Setting an accurate scale is a crucial step in setting up your takeoff, as the scale you set up now will affect all other measurements. And that's how to add new drawings and set the scale in the new takeoff tool. Thank you for using Price a Job.